Hello, Year 4, and welcome to today's lesson. Here you have the date and the learning intention, which is to create a storyboard after reading a story. For this lesson, you will need a pencil or pen and some line paper, a dictionary. It's OK if you do not have a dictionary on hand. You can go online to search for word meanings. So you can use your device to look up the definitions of words you're going to come across later. So pause here and gather the stuff so we can get ready to move on. Right, let's start with the word of the day. And it is adversary. Adversary has four syllables. Look on the slide to see how I've broken it up into the four syllables. Adversary means your adversary is someone you are competing with or arguing or fighting against. The example is in green. Paul's greatest adversary was himself. Have a turn to say the word. Break it up into syllables. Excellent. Now you understand what adversary means. Now there's two synonyms for adversary. One is opponent and the other is rival. They mean exactly the same as the word adversary. You can add the suffix IES to turn adversary into adversaries. So it becomes plural, which means more than one, because adversary is singular. And if you add the suffix you see down below, it turns it into a plural. There is one rule you need to remember. When you add the suffix, you have to leave out the letter Y and add the IES. So pause here. Get ready with your writing material. And your task is to write two sentences. The first sentence, you need to use the word adversary like I have in my green sentence. And for your second sentence, use the suffix. So adversary becomes a plural and it would read as adversaries and write a sentence. So two sentences and start now. Well done for writing those two sentences out with both the words here for. Here are my examples. The girl waited nervously as she watched her adversary perform. William the Conqueror battled bravely with his adversaries. Pause here, reread your sentences, check you've got the punctuation and check you've got your words spelled correctly and you've used the rule for the second word where you've added the suffix that and then we can get ready to move on to our reading task once again welcome to chapter four of the miraculous journey of edward Tulane. are you sitting comfortably then let's begin once there was a princess who was very beautiful she shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night but what difference did it make that she was beautiful? None. No difference. Why did it make no difference? Asked Abilene. Because, said Pellegrina, she was a princess who loved no one and cared nothing for love, even though there were many who loved her. At this point in the story, Pellegrina stopped and looked right at Edward. She stared deep into his painted-on eyes, and again, Edward felt a shiver go through him. And so, said Pellegrina, still staring at Edward. What happened to the princess? said Abilene. And so, said Pellegrina, turning back to Abilene. The king, her father, said that the princess must marry, and soon after this, a prince came from a neighbouring kingdom and he saw the princess and immediately he loved her. 
he gave her a ring of pure gold and placed it on her finger he said these words to her i love you but you know what the princess did abeline shook her head she swallowed the ring she took it from her her finger and swallowed it she said that is what i think of love and she ran from the prince she left the castle and went deep into the woods and so and so what said abeline what happened then and so the princess became lost in the woods she wandered for many days finally she came to a little hut and she knocked on the door she said let me in i'm cold there was no answer she knocked again she said let me in i am hungry a terrible voice answered her the voice said enter if you must the beautiful princess entered and she saw a witch sitting at a table counting pieces of gold three thousand six hundred and twenty-two said the witch i am lost said the beautiful princess what of it said the witch three thousand six hundred and twenty-three i'm hungry said the princess not my concern said the witch three thousand six hundred and twenty-four but i am a beautiful princess said the princess three thousand six hundred and twenty-five replied the witch my father said the princess is a powerful king must help me or there will be consequences consequences said the witch she looked up from her gold she stared at the princess you dare to talk to me of consequences very well then we will speak of consequences tell me the name of the one you love love said the princess she stamped her foot why must everyone always speak of love whom do you love said the witch you must tell me a name i love no one said the princess proudly you disappoint me said the witch she raised her hand and said one word bar figury and the beautiful princess was changed into a warthog what have you done to me squealed the princess talk to me of consequences now will you said the witch and she went back to counting her pieces of gold three thousand six hundred and twenty six said the witch as the water princess ran from the hut and out again into the forest the king's men were in the forest too and what they and what were they looking for a beautiful princess and so when they came upon an ugly warthog they shot it immediately pow no said abeline yes said pellegrina the men took the warthog back to the castle and the cook slit open its belly and inside it she found a ring of pure gold there were many hungry people in the castle that night and all of them were waiting to be fed so the cook put the ring on her finger and finished butchering the warthog and the ring that the beautiful princess had swallowed shone on the cook's hand as she did her work the end the end said abeline indignantly yes said pellegrina the end but it can't be why can't it be because it came too quickly because no one is living happily ever after that's why ah and so pellegrina nodded she was quiet for a moment but answer me this how can a story end happily if there is no love but 
well it is late and you must go to sleep pellegrino took edward from abeline she put him in his bed and pulled the sheet up to his whiskers she leaned close to him she whispered you disappoint me after the old lady left edward lay in his small bed and stared up at the ceiling the story he thought had been pointless but then most stories were he thought of how the princess and how she had become a warthog how gruesome how grotesque what a terrible fate edward said abeline i love you i don't care how old i get i will always love you yes yes thought edward he continued to stare up at the ceiling he was agitated for some reason that he could not name he wished that pellegrina had put him on his side so that he might look up the stars and then he remembered pellegrina's description of the beautiful princess she shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night for some reason edward found comfort in these words and he repeated them to himself as bright as the stars on a moonless night as bright as the stars on a moonless night over and over until at last the first light of dawn appeared so that was the story pellegrina read to abeline about the awful princess and your task here for is to rewrite the story on a storyboard in your own words make sure you've got all the events in sequence and you can add pictures on the following slide you'll see an example of a blank storyboard so you know how you're going to organize your writing and your pictures and afterwards have a think about how abeline felt after the story how do you feel about the story ending so you would have seen words highlighted in yellow that's what you need the dictionary for you're gonna find out the word meanings before you even begin with the storyboard enjoy the task remember after you're done read and check and fix any errors you come across and you can send pictures of your work to the email address up there have a good day and stay safe everyone